Have you ever dreamed of selling everything and moving to Thailand? I know you have. Well, today we're going to meet someone who lives right up there and he has done it. He's not only sold everything and moved to Thailand, he's got himself a different passport and a secondary citizenship. This is an American guy who's living the dream that you might be sitting there thinking about living. And we're gonna chat with him and hear his full story. I'm really looking forward to this one. So let's go meet him. He's right up there. So I'm here with Mark. So I wanna start your story right when you were deciding that you wanted a second passport. What was going on? Well, it was January, 2021. And I just watched the American government sit down and the president write executive order after executive order, you know, canceling things that used to be ongoing, like the Canadian Keystone Pipeline with the signature of Penn. And I had been watching a lot of YouTube videos, including yours, on thinking about leaving the United States anyway. And then it came to me from my research that I don't own my passport from the United States. What do you mean by that? You don't own that passport. You buy it from them, you had to pay to get your passport, but they can cancel your passport at the click of a finger. I mean, if they decide that nobody from the United States can travel to Thailand, when you try to fly to Thailand, your passport's not valid. They could make somebody else mad in the world and maybe some country that you wanted to go to was mad at them and said, we're not letting people with U.S. passports in. So I watched another channel online and uh, they had a lot of good information about the fact that you can buy a citizenship by investment. And so you weren't doing this because you were going to move abroad. I know that the American system is one of the only ones in the world that taxes based on citizenship. You weren't looking to get rid of your U.S. citizenship. You're looking almost as like a secondary citizenship as an insurance. It's an insurance. It's a plan B. The United States government, if they decide that I can't travel, well, this is my United States passport. And this is the passport from the island of St. Lucia. So before we get to St. Lucia specifically, you decided you want a second passport. How did you end up landing on St. Lucia? Are there lots of options out there? Well, for one, it had the best price at the time for a single individual. Their base price was 100,000. 100,000 US dollars? 100,000 US dollars. Plus you, you pay to have an investigation done. That's like 10,000 or 9,500 or something. And that's to submit your paperwork. But you're not allowed to submit your paperwork by yourself. You have to hire one of their approved agents. So I sent out an email, I interviewed all the agents, found one I thought I could trust, and agreed to pay him his agency fee. And then he sent me the papers and what I needed to do, which was extensive. And I'll get into that probably in more on my channel videos on, on all that. But it took about three months to fill out and find all the paperwork. Like if you were divorced in 1973, you know, they wanted to see a copy of that divorce decree that you had no idea where it is. So after you get all the paperwork together and submit the uh, application, how did the process play out? After I got the paperwork together, I went back and forth with the agent and he said, it all looks good. Put the originals all in an envelope, FedEx them down to St. Lucia, along with 10 more thousand, and we'll submit them to the government. And then the government takes them and they do a really deep background. Now, if you're a criminal, you ain't got a chance. If you got DUIs, you might not have a chance. If you had DUI 20 years ago, yeah. And here's the thing, here's why they check. Other governments don't really like it. The United States would rather this didn't exist. But this is a small island, a beautiful little island. The government doesn't want to bother you. The taxation's virtually non-existent. There's no hassle, no headache. They get money by selling these citizenships. You know, you're representing them. Because I could see a lot of people being interested in this, particularly Americans. But I have a friend who's 37 years old, American. 
has recently left, has a great job overseas, thinking of starting some businesses, has to file taxes back in the U.S. Oh, every, okay. every year. I'm Canadian, so we just declare ourselves non-tax residents when we don't live there, don't have to file. But I could see a lot of Americans, like $100,000, a ton of money. But if you can avoid paying the rest of your life to the IRS... I could do that, but that was not the reason. I mean, I have sold almost everything I have in the United States. I've got a place in Florida that I'm not using. That's my official address is in Florida. Everything is in Florida. But you know, I love my country. I'm not really happy with it at the moment, but I love my country. There's never been a bigger state of change in the United States as there is right now. Everything's changing all the time. Nobody likes each other. Half the country hates the other half the country. You don't know what's gonna happen. And look, I got so many trips around the sun, buddy. Yeah. Okay, I don't want them screwing with my life. So for a hundred and something thousand dollars, I get the insurance policy. Right. And there's another benefit. You know what a chore it can be to get visa or resident status like in Thailand. This passport right here, they are a member of the East Caribbean community. That allows me to take this passport and move in without paperwork to about 20 countries in the Caribbean. And they share the same currency. You're allowed to work in any of these 20 countries. And all these places that you can go, show them your passport and you're a citizen. You're just like the EU. Somebody in, in Italy can pick up, drive to Spain and say, I want to live here. I'm going to rent an apartment. I'm going to live here, right here in Madrid or Barcelona and no paperwork required. So this passport gives me 20 places I can run to. Walk in the door and they say, welcome. Wow. I've heard about a lot of these kind of global nomads who, who take multiple citizenship. Is there residency requirements? Like, do you have to spend, oh, cheers. Cheers, buddy. We finally got it. This is the guy. This is two who years. Who sent a video to me two years ago playing the guitar, saying, I'm going to go to Thailand, I'm going to... Buy good. Chris a beer. Yeah. The words to that little limerick was, you only get so many trips around the sun, I'm going to sell my house, my cars, my guns, I'm going to go to Thailand, have a little fun, I'm going to buy Chris a beer. And we did it, brother. We did it. So back into this, so St. Lucia doesn't require you to spend six months of the year on the ground there. I've heard that some of this, these some places do. do. Some do. This one has no requirements whatsoever and no taxes on your income. If I move down there and I have a YouTube business that's paying me money to my U.S. residents, they don't want a piece of it. Now, sure, they got value added tax when you go buy some groceries at the store or a big screen TV if you live there. They're is, not going to charge you. Is, is there an annual fee? Does, is it, does this last a lifetime? No, well, the citizenship lasts a lifetime. The passports, like other passports, need to be renewed in five years. When the time comes, I just contact the St. Lucia Embassy and say I need to renew my passport and they'll send me a new one. I mean, the paperwork was extensive. I mean, it was that thick. So you got, you got 20 countries, you get your passport, we're, we're, you're, you're all approved. You got 20 Eastern Caribbean island nations at your disposal. We're sitting in Bangkok. How'd that happen? Because I watched your videos all the time and the people were just so nice. And uh, I just got sick of the Western world, okay? I have been here. I've not been to a McDonald's. I haven't been to a Burger King. We get fried chicken from a grill on the street three times a week. We get fresh fruit on the street four or five times a week. I mean, the food here, I thought I'd come over here and lose weight. Well, that's been a losing proposition, let me tell you. <laughs> How long have you been here? I left July 4th of 2022. Oh, wow, Independence Day. I left on, you know why? Because they were having Armageddon. All the planes were grounded. 2,000 flights a day, you know, canceled, all that. And I said, you know, the Americans like to drink beer and Kirk burgers on July 4th. Nobody's gonna be flying July 4th. So I waited to July 4th, because if you remember, 
Thailand opened up July 1st to where you didn't have to come with your COVID certificates. Yeah. I spent three minutes in customs. I spent one and a half minutes in line. I went to the desk. She said, boarding pass, passport, stamp, 30 days, out the door in under three minutes. Welcome to Thailand. So I waited in June. The last big thing I had to sell, my house and then finally my car. I got rid of the guns earlier. And then I just waited July 4th. I flew nonstop to Tokyo and Tokyo nonstop to here, first class, and loved it all the way on Japan Airlines. And I said, I'm out of there. How long do you think you'll be in Thailand? I'm going to use this as my base of operations. And now that I finally got through the visa nightmare that I went through, I've had the regular visas, I've had an educational visa. I had to make a border run on the educational visa because they wouldn't exchange that for an O retirement visa. There's some sort of rule they say you can't go from an education or retirement visa. So fly to Laos, come back, get a regular stamp in, and then we'll put your- and So now you're on a retirement now visa? Now I'm on a retirement visa. It's good through April of 2024. And I always say on my channel, careful, or you might sell everything and move to Thailand. I've only met a few people who did it, and you're one of them. So. I am happy to death. You know, I've never met nicer people. I wanted to buy a computer monitor. I went to Fortune Town. You know why I went to Fortune Town? I saw you go to Fortune Town on your channel. So I asked the girl behind the counter. I had a bunch of packages. And I asked her which way to the elevator. Girl picked that monitor up, carried it to the elevator, got in the elevator, went down four floors, took it outside in the rainy season, pouring down rain, asked me where I wanted to go, hailed a cab, told the person in Thai, because she spoke good English, where I needed to go to, and refused a tip three times. I finally had to force a hundred baht into her hand. Well, that's not happening in Best Buy back down in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> he got the same chance as Dillinger had in an alley in Chicago of getting that to happen in the United States. I was in the BTS here. A young man tapped me on the shoulder and said, sir, would you like my seat? Because you know, I'm 67 years old. This kid was 19. In Chicago, he was shot me for blocking his view. <laughs> you don't get that in the United States. That's why I come here. You know, the security guards here, they all know your name. Here, I came to the building today. They security stopped me. Who are you here to see? It's a giant building. I said, I'm here to see Mark. Aha, Mark. Yes, go come in. Go say. Yeah. We go out for food. I'll just bring back all the security people food. Here, have some grilled chicken, have some grilled pork. Just to say hi because, you know, it, you can be a dick or you can be nice. It's just better to be nice. Yeah, yeah, and it's better just to kind of live life. The and, whole uh, world had Thai people who believed in karma. Must be part of their Buddhist roots. Yeah. Has to be, but Thanks. don't get them behind the wheel of a car or behind the handlebars of a motorcycle. No, when they they do, turn crazy when in Bangkok. They, when they do go off, I've seen whiskey bottles flying, but they can get they can fly off the handle. But I think you know you have to uh, you have to kind of set them off, and it's pretty rare. Motorcycles drive the wrong way up sidewalks, the wrong way up streets, the wrong way. I saw one on the steps the other day. I mean, coming down steps, how do you get there? I don't know. It's just fun to watch. So, yeah, I mean, it seems like uh, you're living your best life, man. And I, I congratulate you. I'd, I'd love to ask you one final question. And that's if there's someone out there watching who's the you of a, a few years ago, you know, feeling like what's what's out, what else is out there? Maybe they're sitting in Cincinnati wondering what else is out there. What would you say to them? Go where you're treated best. If the government don't treat you well, pick up and move. If the weather don't treat you well, pick up and move. One of the reasons I'm not in Eastern Caribbean is hurricane system. I mean, these guys keep getting hit with hurricanes all the time. And my ex once said, never live in a place that has evacuation route signs on the highway. If you see a sign that says evacuation route, don't live there. It's probably not a good idea. Yeah, so if you're thinking about doing it, let me tell you, there's only one dream 
that can go bad. And that's a dream you don't take. That's a dream you never embark upon. What's the worst that can happen? You don't like it? Move back. Yeah, that's great advice. Or if you don't like it, move somewhere else. Well, that's some amazing advice, ma'am. Well, it's great to finally meet you. And thanks for telling your story. I, th I think it's really inspiring. And if you guys want to hear more about his stuff, he's, he's got a channel called At Mark. Dash Hannah. At Mark Dash Hannah, H-A-N-N-A. -N -N and he makes videos sharing some of his knowledge, life lessons. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys, if you're in his shoes and, and wondering if you could just kind of sell it all and have a, have a good time and good life in Thailand, I'm sitting beside living proof. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Cheers. around the big old sun. I'm selling my house, my cars, my guns. Going to Thailand, have some fun. Gonna go buy Chris a beer.